The goal of capitalist innovation is to economize on labor enough to create a product that's slightly below the socially necessary labor time. This lets them benefit from an inequality in exchange, just like Captain Kidd. But also like Captain Kidd, this is only possible if the capitalist keeps this innovation to himself. Capitalists do put a lot of effort into keeping their company secret secret, but they also spend a lot of time trying to discover the secrets of their competitors. In fact, there is a whole industry devoted to intercapitalist spying. It's called the competitive information industry. It is essentially an industry for capitalist pirates, all trying to steal golden eggs from each other. And of course, once a secret gets out, once a labor-saving technology gets spread amongst the whole industry, the socially necessary labor time of those commodities falls, and so does their price. We now have a new equilibrium price, a leveled playing field, and capitalists must again set about innovating to try and outsmart each other. Thus there is a constant, never-ending process of innovation of the material forces of production, machines, which is essential to capitalist competition. For all you anti-Civ people out there and Luddites, I want to point out that I just connected technological progress with the need to innovate in the capitalist economy. Of course, then we get another problem. If labor is the sole source of value, and the competitive process drives capitalists to constantly seek to economize on labor, we have the model for an economic process which over time diminishes the actual amount of value in society. This sets the stage for what is called the falling rate of profit argument. It's a topic I'll discuss in greater detail in future videos, but let me sketch in the basic explanation here. We call the difference between the value created by workers and the wages they are paid surplus value. And we call the process of extracting this surplus value exploitation. Capitalists seek to raise their overall profits by increasing the amount of surplus they extract from workers. The amount of surplus S per variable capital V. The rate of profit is best represented algebraically as P equals S over C plus V, or the rate of profit equals surplus value divided by the cost of constant and variable capital. Or, in other words, the rate of profit is the amount of surplus value extracted from workers divided by the cost of raw materials and labor. The goal is to raise S surplus relative to C plus V. I have just shown that what happens in competition is a process of increasing the amount of C, constant capital, relative to V, variable capital. A constant process of revolutionizing the forces of production by introducing more machines into the production process. So in our equation, we have this paradox where we are trying to increase the numerator by increasing the denominator, that is, increase surplus value by increasing the amount of constant capital we employ in production. This is a dangerous game. The argument of the falling rate of profit is that although S always increases with innovations in C, it increases at a declining rate as we increase the denominator. Falling rates of profit mean economic crisis because value creation in the capitalist society is a social creation. The profit rate falls for everyone and affects everyone. But this is only the barest mathematical sketch of the argument. What remains to be shown is all the countervailing tendencies away from the falling rate of profit. This will have to wait for a future video.